Okay, I'm here. And I don't think this has ever been attempted before on live filming. And that is suggesting the uh, right hand front carriage gib on a 1941 Axelson using, it's hard to see, a very long 1941 plum screwdriver also made in Los Angeles and certainly intended for this job. Okay, don't scrimp on tooling folks. Okay, here we go. It's hard to get in there. I got it. Okay. I'll see if I can get the light in there. And you can see what's going on. And I'm going to give it a... Uh, hold on, it's going to take both hands here. Just to break it loose. Okay, I got it. I hope you can see this giving that gib adjuster. Hold on. Ah, there it is. A quarter. Oh, I feel it loosening up. Okay, we've got at least a half turn loose. Okay, I need whoa, I need to I need to take a break. Okay, we got we got a problem. Okay. We're gonna try another cut. I loosen the gaps this side. Here. I got this thing moved up real good. I dropped the speed down to 628. The feet is gonna go for is three and a half thousandths. So I gotta flip here. Okay. In case you didn't know, this is one lever on the feed box that you can shift, but you don't want the clutches in there, so I'll show you. Of course, that's within reason. Okay, I got to fit in for seven thousandths depth. So let's cut it. I dropped the speed down a notch because I was getting this uh, material welding on the tool tip. This is some very uh, low quality, low carbon steel. But it's okay for just checking this out. The machine runs uh, quite smooth at this speed.
see if we got that uh, little bit of well out of there. This is interesting. I loosen the Gibbs, got the dial snap gauge set here. We're not going for a particular diameter, we're just looking at error along the way. So I got it set zero here. We start moving it back. It's still at zero. That is eight inches from the face of the chuck. Move out here. 
we're still hitting zero. That is uh, 10 inches anyway. Now we're starting to lost two thousandths to the smaller diameter. So I loosened the Gibbs and it moved this reduced diameter back about two and a half inches it looks like to me. It's, it's just kind of interesting. But if you look at this, it looks to me like it'll turn exactly true for at least 12, 12 inches. Now there's some other things I'm going to do, kind of vary uh, where the tailstock is. And I can also shift the tool post around and probably get that last four inches to um, true up by keeping the lathe off that bad part there, see? What's it doing here? Yeah, see, it's uh, that's five thousandths less than it is right here. And it uh, drops off rather quickly, too. See, it's starting right there. Move up a little bit. You gotta be sure to make sure this is square. Yeah, about two thousand small. See, there we're right on. Within a half inch, it starts going wacky, and then then rapidly uh, tapering down to five thousandths too small. You know, and that can be avoided. You know. You can find an error like this, but it doesn't matter until it matters. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this machine is really, really doing quite well, and uh, this is not really something to worry about. Now, I know people like to put straight edges and uh, a lot of dial indicators on the machine, and I'm just not used to doing that. That's sort of like not my function. My function is to make parts, adjust the machine to make the parts as best as possible. If I can no longer make parts, then it goes to the people with straight edges and uh, dial indicators and scrapers and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Well, we got a cannon uh, shooting coming up, I do believe.